is for believers, baptism with water is not an option. It's not optional. Um, it's actually a commandment of God that we are commanded to do it. So if a believer is not baptized, they're actually in sin. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm going to force you to get baptized. I still think, you know, any commandment from God that we need to keep should be voluntarily kept because it's something you, sh you should be obeying God. You shouldn't be obeying a man. So nobody should be baptized or doing anything, whether it's soul winning or praying or reading your Bible, getting baptized. You shouldn't be doing it because a man is commanding you to do it. You should be doing it because God is commanding you to do it. In Matthew 3, we read here the baptism of Jesus. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? So there's that being baptized with the Holy Spirit that John the Baptist is talking about. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it, or allow it, to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So we see there that Jesus makes the statement that Jesus is submitting to the will of the Father to be baptized with water to fulfill all righteousness. So if we want to fulfill all righteousness, if we want to keep the commandments of God, we also need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and be baptized with water. Uh, Acts 2, verse 37, we see here at the day of Pentecost, Peter preaching here. Now when they heard this, so so. Peter had just preached about Jesus rising from the dead, you know, talking about David prophesying of the death of Jesus going to hell and resurrecting again for our sins. In verse 37, he says here, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the, of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So remember, not, shall we, not what must we do to be saved, like it says in Acts 16, 30 and uh, 31, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So what, how should we, you know, obey God and keep the commandments? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, because you've had your sins remitted, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So you see there that they need to be baptized to, uh, to keep the commandments of God. It's a commandment that God uh, has us to do, to be baptized with water. Uh, Acts 10.44, we see here when Cornelius and the Italian band uh, see a vision and they come to hear words of Simon Peter, whereby thou and all his house will be saved. Uh, let's just read from verse 44. Let's read from 43. So Peter is preaching to these, uh, these Gentile believers that have come uh, sent by God. He says here in verse 43, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Whosoever believeth in him. So there's the, the faith on Jesus Christ only, not by works, not by, you know, he didn't say, you know, you needed to repent of your sins or, or keep the commandments to, to receive the remission of sins. It's whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision were, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we see that, that not only the Jews were baptized with the Holy Ghost at the day of Pentecost, but now when Peter is preaching to these Gentile believers, they also were baptized by the Holy Ghost at that point in time. And it shocked them because they thought the promise was only to the Jews and God revealed to Peter and, to the, and the disciples with Peter that the promise was not only to the Jews, but to as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the Holy Ghost comes upon these um, Gentile believers as well. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have the received the Holy Ghost as well as we? I just wanted you to take note of that verse when we go on to the next point. But that verse there where he's basically saying, you know, they've been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Should we stop them from being baptized with water? So again, seeing the connection there between being baptized with the Holy Ghost and that's why you should be baptized with water because you've been baptized by the Holy Ghost. And look at this, and he commanded them to be baptized. So he didn't just make it optional, he didn't just suggest it to them. The Bible says there that Peter commanded them to be baptized because it's a commandment of God to fulfill all righteousness in the name of the Lord. 
And then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And the last verse I just want to go to on this point here is obviously the Great Commission. Simon, hey, don't be too noisy, okay? Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So not only is it a commandment to the believer to get baptized, but it's a commandment to us as believers to baptize those that get saved. So if it was optional for the believers, why would it be commanded to the church or to, to the body of Christ to baptize those that get saved? It's not an optional thing. It's something you have to do to, to, um, to obey God and um, uh, not be in sin.